We started last Sunday with this subject, with this sermon series, talking about grace. And Pastor Brett kicked it off, and it was really intense, and it was really good. It went really well. And I didn't know how to follow up with that, but I love the subject of grace. There are a couple of concepts that are unique to our faith. No other religion, no other faith has these two concepts. One of those concepts is grace. And the second one of those concepts is redemption. Jesus Christ is the only person, is the only way, is the only teacher of redemption and grace. Is that awesome? That is exclusive to us. Only Christians, only Christians practice these two words and live in these two words, grace and redemption, and they go hand to hand. There are no other religions that talk about redemption, for instance. None. Only Christians, Christ followers. There is no other religion that talks about grace. Only us, Christians. These are two concepts that have to do with us. I wanted to go to the basic, the lowest denominator for those math quizzes, you know. I wanted to go to the essence of how to explain Lord's grace at any level. Next Sunday, we're going to talk about the types of grace that are identified in the Bible by several theologians. We are Wesleyan from the Wesleyan Church, right? John Wesley, and he he identified four types of grace, and that's what we're going to be talking about next Sunday. But that's next Sunday. Today, we're going to lay the groundwork of what is this grace and why is it so important to us. So the easiest biblical way for me to put grace into context is by this phrase. The Lord provides. Say it with me. The Lord. Say it like you mean it. That's it. I want you to start saying this phrase a lot more in your life. The Bible is full of God's grace over men and women. Full of it. It is just so jam-packed with it. And every story, the essence, the heart of what kept the men and women of God moving forward and getting to know God in a more intimate way was this phrase, the Lord provides. This is grace. We are going to dive in today in two stories in the Bible that I love. One was orchestrated by God the Father in the beginning of our book, the Bible. In the beginning, in Genesis, we're going to read a story about a father and son. And, and a story that was orchestrated by God Himself that is many times misunderstood by people that don't have faith in their hearts. It's crazy to them to read this story like God has to be evil because of this story. And then we're going to read a second story that Jesus himself taught his disciples and taught people also about a father and a son. And that's found in the book of Luke. So today let's start with the first story. So story number one. We ready? I had to put that on the slide just so we don't get lost. All right. So we're going to read in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, verse 1. And we're going to read just a part of this story, okay? So we have it on the screen. Let's read together. It says this. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain, I will show you. That's where people say, like, this has to be an evil God, right? What, what is he asking? It says, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took him, he took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. On the third day, on what day? On the third day, this is important, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey 
while I and the boy go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two of them went together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, Go, God himself will... Say it like you mean it. Will provide. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and look, took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now, now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord it will be provided. It will be provided. You know, one time we were in a Bible study like in a home group, and I was there, and somebody was teaching this story. And somebody there that had a very rambunctious son said, Oh, I wish God would ask that of me. <laughs> but that was, was funny at the moment. I don't know if it was funny today, you know, but it's a tough story to read. Many people use it to, to kind of show the, the ridiculousness of the Bible. How could God start off the Bible with a story like this? Finally, Abraham is able to have a son, his only son. He really loved him. And God said, Abraham, I need you to sacrifice your son to me. That sounds tough. As they're going on this journey, his son Isaac realizes that there's something missing in this journey. Uh, how are we going to be able to accomplish what we're set out to accomplish if we're missing stuff? Where he said, we have this, we have that, but what about this? That's pretty important. But Abraham understood God. He had known God deeply and had learned to trust God fully. And the answer was grace. The Lord will provide. Every single one of us are on a journey. And God asks things of us in this journey. And as we walk this journey and we realize that there is stuff missing, our faith should pop up and should remind us that the Lord will provide. As a church, we're here right now and we see our surroundings and we're like, Lord, to make all this happen, we need more people, we need volunteers and everything. And they ask me as a pastor and I kind of go into prayer and my faith always creeps up and reminds me, David... The Lord. Every single time that we set up on a business or on a venture or we want to reach a goal and we're halfway there and we realize we're lacking some things, we're missing a few things. This is where grace kicks in in our lives. Where we know that we're missing this or lost that or, or we're you know, ripped away of some some of these things, but we have to understand that God's grace, God's grace provides every need in our lives. Now this story is an important story because the Bible doesn't end with this story. It continues. 
And we understand that God the Father is orchestrating in the beginning of the Bible. He's already showing humanity His own heart. He's already showing humanity that He is going to be the one that will sacrifice His only Son for you and for me. He's already showing us that, that there is a connection, that there is a, a reason for this immense sacrifice. Now in this story, obviously, when Abraham was getting ready to slay his own son, to sacrifice his own son for you know, the needs of others, the angel of the Lord came and said, Hey, no need. I know what you're going through. I know what you're feeling inside because I have decided to do that same thing for humanity. You see, God has only one son, Jesus. And in John 3.16, the Bible teaches us that it, it, He's very loved and God gave His Son so that whosoever will believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But the moment Jesus came and there was this moment where there might have been a possibility, maybe a very remote possibility where maybe something else would happen, this time the sacrifice went through. The sacrifice had to happen. And we see God's tender love in this moment that God provided the sacrifice for you and for me. Because this is grace. Grace is understanding that the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. Now, keep that story in your heart. Let's go now to story number two. All right? So we don't get lost. And this is found in the book of Luke. And we're going to be re reading Luke chapter 15, verse 17 on. This is a pretty famous story. It's about the prodigal son. So there's a son that wants his inheritance. So he's, he's pretty much telling his dad, Dad, you're taking too long to die. So, so just give me your stuff because you're taking too long. And so the father, you know, says, okay. Gives him his inheritance. Go, goes and squanders everything and... He's in a very bad situation, and then this happens, okay? Verse 17, when he came to his senses, this is the son, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still long ways off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put ring on his finger and sandals and on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. This story was told by Jesus to his disciples. And this is the story of grace. It's a story of redemption. It's your story and it's my story. This is what Jesus came to earth for. To make us understand the power behind God's love for your life and for my life. And the way God reaches us is He provides a way. For instance, here's one of the theological conundrums that many people debate on, and we'll talk a little bit about ne this next Sunday, but if you, before knowing Jesus, if you are a sinner, like Romans says, you know, for all have sinned, right? All have sinned. And so if I'm a sinner before having Jesus in my heart, and God is completely holy and perfect, how can I approach God? It's like saying this, if there's a light shining completely bright 
but I have a little bit of a shadow here. How can I bring shadow into light? It is impossible. Because the moment a shadow steps into light, what happens to the shadow? Disappears. So how can I approach holiness if I'm broken? If I'm not holy? Well, the answer is grace. God will provide. He provides a bridge between you and Him. He provides. In the Bible, there are stories even where people believed in Jesus, but they knew they didn't have enough faith. I kind of believe in God I have, but I don't think I have faith for this, for this moment, for this situation. I don't think I have the right faith. What do I do? The Bible says, ask God, because the Lord will provide. The Lord provides. This is grace in our lives. I want us to understand this because the only way that we can come to God's presence and know Him more and, and go deeper into understanding what God wants for our lives is through grace. And grace is a very powerful agent that brings redemption to our lives and transformation to our souls. It brings what was dead to life. Every single time God provides. There isn't a single story in the Bible where God didn't show up when His people needed Him. Not one. God always provides. As we sit here in church, and as we uh, knowingly, we're a young church, and we know that there's, there's a big world out there, and we're just a tiny part of it, and, and this world has big problems, and it has big issues, and big debates, and big conversations, and, and things going on, and sometimes in prayer we're seeking Him, and we're trying to see what I can do to make things better, or to make a change. That's the wrong way to approach it. Because God always provides. There is nothing bigger than God. Amen? Tell your neighbor there's nothing bigger than God. Remind them, nothing bigger than God. And so as we're here, we need to understand that if we're here and we're walking the path that God wants for our lives, whatever we're lacking, whatever we need, God will provide. Man, you know, I, I, I've been surrounded by a lot of people that, that live lives of faith that are very, uh, lives of faith that are very admirable. I, I, I have pastors in my family, and I grew up with pastors, and that's one of the reasons why at the beginning I did not want to be a pastor, right? But I saw sometimes when they made this, these decisions to start this journey, and I'm like, wait a minute, how, how are you going to finish this? How are you going to get there? And the answer was always, God will provide. I've, I've, I've hung around missionaries, and, and I have missionaries in my family, and I see the projects that they have, and sometimes I'm like, how is this going to happen? How are we going to be able to make this, this happen? And, and the answer is always, God will provide. I've had people in my, in, in, uh, around me, friends and family, that go through really tough situations, tragedies, crises, that I'm like, how are these people going to be able to go through this, to come out better than before? Tough things that, that are soul-crushing. How can they come back from this? And the example is always, David, God will provide. You know, I've, my dad was raised by a widow. And I, I hear the stories when my, before my grandmother graduated to heaven. And, and everyone is mind-blowing. And every single story is a testimony of God will provide. You know, it's been a challenge for me in these few months, in these weeks, uh, now a few months, uh, to strengthen my prayer life. And every single time I go into prayer, every single time I go into prayer, when I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to pray more than 40 seconds today. It's going to be tough. Oh, you laugh. Oh, you can pray 40 seconds? Close your eyes. Ah, kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> 
But I'm being honest. Oh man, 40 seconds, I don't know what to say anymore. After I pray for, a, you know, my kids and my wife and my house and finances in America, it's like, I don't know what to pray anymore. What, what do I do? What's going on? But now every single time that I seek in prayer life, God brings somebody in my path to strengthen my prayer life, to go deeper into it. And every single time I go deeper into it, I realize something, that my spirit already knows that God is going to provide. My spirit knows that I should trust God. It is when I stop praying that I cannot hear the Spirit of God in my life. I can't hear it anymore. And so anxiety starts going up and stress starts going up because I don't hear God will, God will provide. God will provide. It's not your talents. It's not four more jobs. Amen? God will. It's not this new strategy. It's not pastor. We need to do flyers and, you know, hand them out. God will. God will provide, but we have to listen to God's voice because when you hear God will provide, not from the pastor, but when you hear it from God in your life, it changes the way we live. It changes the way I live. And this change is what the world is looking for. The world is not looking for motivational speakers. Can I get an amen? My calling is not to motivate you. That's not my calling. The world is not looking for amazing like presenta musical presentations and stuff. Can I get an amen? The world is looking for redemption. It's looking for grace. This is a powerful thing. This is what Jesus was teaching them. And in this story, there is a moment, a moment where the son thinks about it and says, you know what, maybe I can pay my dad back. Maybe I can do it on my own. I know I asked for the inheritance. Let's put a number on it. 100K. It was $100,000. I squandered it. And now I'm, I'm really in a very tough situation. He thought about it and he's like, maybe I can work it off. Maybe I can go back. I'm strong, I can work the fields or clean the house or build something and I can work it off. Maybe that will allow me to enter God's presence in a humble way and say, Lord, I am here but I'm meek and I, I'm, I know I messed up but I want to pay it off, I want to work it off, I want to do it in my... And I don't know how it is in your culture but I've heard several stories, I haven't seen it in my house but... I know several stories, and especially in the Hispanic culture, if you mess up, especially with grandparents, it's like, hey, abuelita, he wants to come back to say I'm sorry. I don't know if I can listen to him right now. I don't know. And they intentionally, like, well, he's going to come to, like, the Thanksgiving thing, you know, the Christmas thing. Well, I'm going to be up in my room. He better walk all the way up and knock on the door, and I don't know how long I'm going to take to answer the door. I'll just make him wait. This is a true story, by the way. Right? Because it's like, I'm not going to go out and see him. He is the one that messed up. Right? They better come in like all oh, kneeled and please, please, please forgive me. I don't want to, you know, I'm sorry. And then find, okay, all right, all right. Okay, all right. Well, just, you know, pay for the whatever and all right. But you better come to me. Well, this was the culture where Jesus was at. The patriarch, you almost had to have like a appointment. You had to show up with a gift. You can't just show up and be like, oh, the, the, the owner of the land and whatever. You know, he, he has a place. You go. There are these protocols. There's, you, you've seen it in like medieval movies, right? When you want a meeting with the king or with the Lord of the land or whatever, you come with a gift and oh yes, proceed and he will see you now, right? We've seen that? That's this culture. And Jesus is telling this story and for the disciples it's making sense now. Okay, he'll pay it off. He'll arrive with a gift, he has to show all this protocol and go through, jump all these hoops and do it. 
And then Jesus says something completely insane. Insane. The dad runs to him. Did the dad mess up? Was the dad wrong? Wasn't everything owed to the dad? But the dad runs to him. In fact, the son, this, this, this is crazy. Read the story. The son starts talking to the dad, right? The dad is like walking with him. The son starts talking to him. He's like, dad, 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 I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I need. And he says these words. I have sin. I'm ready to pay it up. And, and the dad doesn't continue the conversation. Did you read it? He doesn't talk to the son. He doesn't even acknowledge. He talks to the servants and says, he's back. My son is back. Carnitas for everyone. Woohoo! And everyone's like, and the, the son is confused. Confused. What is going on? I didn't come back from winning a battle. I didn't come back from doing good things. I come back in shame. I'm willing to work. Servants, that means me. I'll clean the table. No! Party time, everybody. Party time. And he puts changes his clothes and puts the ring on and then boom his life instantly has changed you see now we've we've gotten used to reading some of these stories since we were kids they tell us these stories in church and but you have to realize that the shock that the disciples and everybody reading and hearing this story were going through what does this mean how could this king, how could this father, how could this Lord run out to this insignificant, worthless, dumb idiot? I don't know if that, that's my version of Bible. I'm writing it right now. Hold on, you know. <laughs> it's kind of like the message, you know, the real message Bible. But how could this happen? How? With one word, grace. Grace. Because the Lord provides it doesn't take long what did the son need everything the son needed the lord provided everything he needed everything he needed do you need a coat you got a coat do you need authority you got authority do you need a party you need food what do you need the lord provides this is your story this is most definitely my story I was ready to come back and just work all my sin off. Oh man, I'm ready, Lord. I just want to work it. I just want to pay it back. I know it's almost like a credit card, you know, with, with interest. I'll just do whatever you want and, and, you know, late fees and all that. That's okay, but I just really needed that, you know, and I messed up and, and I want to pay it back. And, and it turns out that the first day I walk into church, it felt like this. Yes, a little bit weird sometimes because it was a weird atmosphere, but I walked in and I just felt like something was running towards me. Something was wanting to, was waiting for me almost. It was almost like that song, that song was for me. It was almost like that message, that message was for, it was waiting for me. Was I the only one? Has anybody felt this way ever in church? It was like the Father running towards me. And I, I start to talk to God, you know, uh, your majesty, Lord, Father, your graciousness. Because <laughs> I used to read King James, right? So I was in the King James. thing. Thou shalt be hidden. Hither, Jesus. I don't know. And you don't know what to say. And it's almost like God is ignoring you completely. Because God is just seeing your need and He's ready to meet your need. He's just seeing your need and is ready to meet your need. If you're sitting here today, you have a need. This is why we come to God. Every single part of, in our lives, there is, even when God is preparing us for a journey intentionally, there are things that we cannot do by ourselves. This is part of following Jesus. 
the lifestyle, the, 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 the seeking God. We cannot do it by ourselves. That's why our phrase here is always, God is with you, and we are too. You can't do this faith alone. You can't. You can't. Grace and redemption are exclusive to Christians. They're exclusive to us. This is a gift. This is a power behind it. Here at One Church, the focus is for our testimony to always go back to God provides. He provided before, and He will do it again. God provides. God provides. My great-grandfathers went through crisis, and God provided. My grandparents went through tough times, and God provided. My parents went through really tough times, and God, I have gone through tough times, and I'm not done yet. And I want my kids to know one thing. God provides. I want to leave this last Bible verse in your heart. A powerful one. A powerful one. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Very powerful. I want you to say, God provides, God provides, God provides. All this week and for the rest of your life. And you will see it in your life. Look at this. It says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that who? Whose? I don't want people to come to one church because oh we have a really, uh, the pastor is a great speaker. I don't know if I'm a great speaker. You know what I'm trying to say. Don't invite people to church because the pastor is really cool. Don't do that. Invite people to church because we want Christ's power to rest on them. Like it does on me. I can't explain it. But God provides. So that Christ's power may rest on me. This is grace. The Lord will provide. Man, what a powerful word when he says, My grace is sufficient. This is it. I know you're going through things. I know there are things you have to figure out and solve and how am I going to address this or that or approach this or why can't I make this happen in my life? Why can't I fix this or do that? Can I tell you what the Bible says? Can I tell you what the Word of God says? It's a message from God's heart to you and saying, son, daughter, my grace is sufficient for you. And so today, as a church, I've been praying, 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 and today my only request to God is that we might feel that His power is resting on us. I don't know what you've gone through, specifically. I don't know where your soul at, is at right now. But I'll tell you one thing. My desire for every single one of us that is here today is that God's power rests in you. That you may understand that His grace is if He will provide. That's what that means. That you don't need to look elsewhere because God will. You don't need to try other things because God, God will provide. Oh, but let me see if this, let me see if that, let me... God will provide. He will provide. I want to, before we pray, <laughs> this is an interesting thing, and just to do a plug for next Sunday so you come back. <laughs> but you see, with people that don't understand grace, a religious spirit is envy. Envy is a, a very toxic religious spirit. And you see this in the older brother in this story. He doesn't understand grace. Oh. He doesn't understand grace, so he becomes jealous. And jealous breaks families. Jealousy breaks churches. 
It breaks connection to what God wanted you to be connected to. And so next Sunday, same time, same place. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be good. All right, family. Where you're at right now, I want you to close your eyes and bow your head. <clears throat> listen to this Bible verse as you have your eyes closed. Just listen to the Word of God. It's not, it's not my style or type of talking. Or, this is just out of the Bible. Just listen to it. Let it soak in. Let it touch your soul. Just listen to the Word of God. And it says this, But He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power rests on me. Father, this morning I just thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you, Lord, for your grace that deeply abounds in every corner of our lives. I thank you for every single man and woman that is here today and my prayer, my heart, is that everyone would understand that your grace is sufficient. In whatever situation, however tough it may seem, your grace is sufficient. That may, they may understand one thing about your heart today is that you will provide you will provide every need. You have enough. You don't run out. But sometimes our soul stops listening to your voice. And so may today be a beautiful, sweet reminder that grace is enough. I pray that every single one in this place may have a testimony that you provided. A testimony in their hearts that they know without a doubt that it was God who did this. It was God who provided. It was God who showed up, who ran after me. It was Him that provided in my life in this tough situation. And so may one church be a place of grace. May every room be a room of grace. May every prayer that comes out of our mouths, Lord, be prayers of grace. Men and women who understand that there's a power resting in us, there is a power that is resting in us, that is sufficient. And may we calm or silence the voice that always says, you need something else. <laughs> you need something else. Grace is sufficient. The Lord will provide. Say it quietly where you're at. Just say the Lord will provide. Believe it. Let your soul vibrate let, let it sink into your mind the lord will provide you will walk out of this place knowing and believing that god is with you and he will provide bring that that is troubling you right now to your mind to your heart bring it forward bring it bring it bring it right now in your mind in your heart as we pray whatever's troubling you just put it right there in the front row of your heart right now. And tell it, you tell it, God will provide. Maybe you got a diagnosis you didn't want to hear. God will 
provide. Maybe you're hearing about inflation and, and crisis and God will provide. Maybe you're feeling you're in a situation that is bigger than you. It's, it's overwhelming. It's, you don't know. God will provide. Maybe you feel like there's an army coming against you. Something that wants to destroy God will provide. This is truth. God will provide. Father, I love what you are doing here among us. I am so honored and privileged to just serve in this house, Lord. May we always, always be people that can speak of these beautiful testimonies on how you have always provided. And may we continue to live out our days in peace because we know that you always provide. And we pray this in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And this beautiful family said, Amen, Amen. amen. Can we give it up this morning? <clears throat>